you know, we started building that bike in 2002 with just a bunch of friends. We had no idea <laughs> we were going to end up in Bolivia. In 2010, the Top 1 Akatak set a new motorcycle land speed record of 376 miles an hour. In the last seven years, no one else has come close to exceeding this speed. But the Top 1 team were not content with just holding the record. They want the Akatak to be the first two-wheeled vehicle over 400 miles an hour. But each year they return to Bonneville only to find it flooded and shrinking. Mike Akative and Rocky Robinson needed a new racetrack. There's one place that seemed ideal, Salar de Yayuni, the largest salt flat in the world. The only problem was its location in the remote Bolivian Andes. Attempting to set a record there was going to be a huge challenge, but in spring 2017, Top One Oil committed to supporting the team in this pioneering effort. First, they sent a survey team, including land speed racing expert Mike Cook. Mike approached us and asked if I was interested in going to Bolivia, and I said, hell yeah. The Bonneville Salt Flats, I've always known them as being, you know, maybe two miles wide at the most, and you know, maybe 10 miles, but you come here and it just takes your breath away. The Bolivian salt flats do literally take your breath away. The rarefied atmosphere 12,000 feet up in the Andes Mountains would affect both engine performance and aerodynamics. The thinner air will allow the Akatak to go 8% faster than at Bonneville, but the engine will need a much bigger turbo. It's going to be very, very tough on the motor. So that's something we're just going to have to find out, you know, how hard can we run them for how long, and that's all part of the equation. How fast can we go? Preparing the machine was just part of the challenge. A team of 30 specialists and all the support materials had to be transported to one of the most remote parts of South America. The Top One Oil Logistics team are experts in shipping products around the world but no one has ever attempted to build a racetrack in this remote part of Bolivia. Thankfully, the Bolivian government backed the project enthusiastically, and Mike Cook and his team set about carving a 15-mile-long racetrack on the spectacular 4,000-square-mile salt flat. This has been a real pioneering effort out here. The logistics were just tremendous. I mean, getting all the equipment out here, arranging for all the people, the officials, grading the track. I mean, I'm in awe right now of how we got all this stuff here. We got a track made. You know, I've heard so much about what a, a great place this is, how amazing the salt is, the conditions and all that, and none of that does it justice. 15 miles of rock hard salt, uh, I've never been on a course that long. As far as a place to get it done, this is the best place. The gathering of some of the fastest vehicles on the planet attracted huge enthusiasm in Bolivia, and we were honored by the president, Evo Morales, officially opening the event. Everything seemed in place, but one thing was missing, the bikes. The container with the Akatak and all the support equipment was meant to arrive weeks before the team. Having been delayed by customs in neighboring Peru, it finally arrived late at night, two days into the five-day window for the event. When I saw the two containers that were supposed to be here almost a month ago show up, I, up until that point, I was so skeptical that any of this was gonna work. The team were now really under pressure to prepare their complex machine. Tower, uh, ACK attack, we're gonna be ready in about five minutes. Is the uh, course locked down and clear? Hello, Mike, we copy that. But the thin air caused the engines to run very rich, and Rocky had to abort the first two runs. The engine management computer was not used to working at 12,000 feet, and so the team had to reprogram it on the salt. Just before the end of the last day of the event, the team managed to dial in the engine tune and Rocky blasts towards the measured mile. He's moving down pretty good, guys. Heads up. The 
Just before the timing lights, the engine blows and Rocky loses power. The team has run out of time. The shipping delays that meant the ARC attack arrived weeks late have robbed them of the chance of achieving their goal. Well, of course I'm disappointed, but you know, that's the way it goes. If this was easy. This is, you know, this is really hard stuff to do. But we still have the record. Well, we're still the fastest bike in the world. The top one ARC attack team have pioneered the fastest racetrack in the world. It's a huge achievement, but they still have one piece of unfinished business. 400 miles an hour.